with a short film titled, It Takes Brains to Tan Hides. I'd like to start off by thanking the Creator and all our relations who made this possible, especially our teachers who passed this information along so that it could be done again, and the dear family, the Wawash Gesh, for following the original instructions from Creator still to this day. The intention of this film is to share a brief insight into the process of using an animal's brain to tan its own hide. It's a fact that every animal in the animal kingdom, its brain is enough to tan its own hide. I'd like to start now by reviewing a few of the tools that we would use in a brain tanning process. The three objects at the bottom are paddles that have been cut and reshaped to um, be able to use to stretch the fibers of the hide while it's stretched in the frame. You'll also need some good rope to tie that hide in its frame, a good pair of scissors, hole punch, and probably one of the most important tools is a double handled blade of some sort. Now this blade's important because it's used to de-flesh and de-hair the hide after it's soaked in a barrel that you can uh, get and cut a hole out the side. You'll need a cooler. This is a fleshing beam that we would use with uh, PVC tubing. It's adjustable for height and the frame to be able to stretch the hide in after. Let's take a closer look at the process of brain tanning. I begin with soaking the hide in fresh water in the barrel. Stagnant water will promote rotting of the hide, making it useless. You want to make sure that the hide is clean of any debris and it's distributed evenly in the bottom of the barrel. I soak salted hides for about four days, cycle, recycling that water on the second day, halfway through. If your hide's green right off the animal, you don't need to soak it. If it's frozen, you might want to thaw it and soak it for a few hours. I use a few rocks to weigh down the hide and make sure no spots are left above the water to dry out. See, it's pretty white after you scrape all the meat, fat off. You want to do that side first because the hair is relatively flat. You go on the meat side first with all these bumps, and depending on who cleans it, how good a quality job they do in cleaning it. You know, there isn't really all that meat to do, but in this case, there was. And so, you want to do that side first and get it all clean. You can almost see the vein entrails. Vein trails. I want to get it down to that. Also, first scraping. I like doing two scrape things on the on the flush side. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to dehair dehair the uh, hide itself. And this side's a real crucial part. There's meat, there's fat, there's skin, then there's epidermis, and then there's hair. So when you're scraping this hair off. It's very important to get that epidermis layer on. With the first scraping here, gets through down to the skin. Here's the epidermis layer, and there's a ridge there, and you can see it. And that's what basically locks the hair follicles in. So I filled the cooler with some water last night from the hose and just let it sit overnight to let all the basically the chemicals of chlorine evaporate out of the water. If you have a weak stomach, I think this is the time to look away. That's deer brain in there. Um, don't tell my wife I'm using her mixer and bowl, but uh, I'm going to mix up this deer brain. Yesterday when I was done 
and scrape in the height, I just basically put it in a Ziploc bag. You can do that if you're going to keep your height overnight for you know, a couple nights or one night. Just put it in something airtight. You can even scrape a bunch of hides like this and put them in Ziplocs and keep them in the freezer and then de thaw them the time when you're ready to do your brain tanning. But I'm just mixing the brain tan in the bowl. I got a little whisk here and a whisk up in the water brain solution. Right, so there you go. Then I moved over to the frame and cut the rope in even pieces and tied them around the frame first. Then I tied the hide in, starting with the top, then a, just a couple on the bottom in the middle, moving down the sides, and because you really want to evenly stretch out your hide in the space of your frame. Now's where the tools come into play that we saw in the beginning, those three paddles. And they're used to really lean into that hide and, and scrape up and down and all over that hide across and sideways and push that water out. And this is a crucial, crucial stage where you might want to get a few people because it's very tiring. And as you can see, there's a few of us that worked on the hide. Even my two-year-old son gave it a try while I was working on the backside. And that's important too that you can get to both sides of the hide while while doing this pushing the water through the through the fibers and you're stretching the fibers out because you really want to break them apart and you have to do this until the hide is completely dry that is the key to the brain tanning process if there's two important parts it's that you scrape the epidermis off all the all the hide and that you can keep stretching the hide while it's all stretched out until it is completely dry and then you'll see that it becomes completely fluffy cloth like and you'll notice the hard spots that you can work them extra hard towards that in end period to catch them up to the softer areas now after it's dried I cut mine out from the fence with scissors and left that because the edges were still pretty hard and it's still a little rough along these edges but in the middle it's it's really soft really fluffy there's the flesh side and the skin side and this is now ready to use for anything we generally use leather for and will outlast commercial tanned leather as well the on artificial chemicals that they use in that process um, take the shelf life away from that type of leather. This will last easy hundred years. Commercial tan leather, maybe half that. And uh, it's the natural acids in the brain that help to break out the fibers in in the skin itself. And and once once they're loosened, it, it, that's what fluffs up and makes the leather soft.